Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another Lab Alert tutorial. Today, I want to show you guys how I put together these tabs, these mounting tabs for Visa mounts. So Visa mounts are kind of this universal mounting system for displays, LCDs, things like that. So here's one on Amazon and it's you mount it to the wall and then you can mount a display uh, to this little kind of mounting bracket thing. And the distance of the holes are kind of outlined here in this photo so you can kind of see there's uh, kind of two sets of different types of holes. There's one that's uh, with the distance of uh, 75 millimeters. Another one has 100 millimeters. Uh, they're on every corner so you can kind of, you have kind of a flexibility there to pick whichever mounting holes you want. And then uh, I, d I didn't know what the holes were so I looked down here and luckily they kind of took a photo of their screws. So I see they have M4, M5, and M6 screws. I guess you can use any one of those. So we kind of use those in the design um, going into it so we, we can pick the right mounting holes, right? So what is this project for? What are these mounting tabs for? I made an update to the Featherbox for the TFT display. This isn't really a big display. It is a 2.4 inch uh, TFT display for the Adafruit Feathers. Um, but uh, Bill Binko, who, uh, who runs AT Makers, asked if I could add some mounting tabs for Visa mounts. And he's the one who's actually sent me the link to this Visa mount. So I was like, yeah, let me give that a try. So uh, I actually went through a little bit of a learning process to learn how to make a, uh, a, these mounting tabs in a way where I can adapt and change the design so that uh, they don't break, right? A lot, a lot of the times when you make a shape uh, and you want to update it later, the sketch dimensions might have some constraints in the wrong places that kind of make the design to break. And I'll give you a little bit of an example of when things break too while, while we're making this. So the goal here is just to kind of make these little tabs that stick out and have the proper distances uh, for this amount, right? So I'll go ahead and kind of make this sort of uh, simple, easy thing. Let me delete all that stuff here. Kind of start with a fresh design. So imagine this is a fresh design. Actually, let's make a real fresh design. So I'll make a new design and it really depends on your project. Are you making an enclosure? Uh, I guess if, you know, you don't have to have a display mounted to VISA mounts, but hey, that's mainly what they're for, right? So what I'll do is I'll actually make a box and instead of making like a sketch box thing, I'm just going to use a box, which is like a primitive. So I'll click on and start working on this. It, it depends on kind of what, um, what the dimensions are. I don't really have any dimensions set up in mind for this example, but I'll just throw in some numbers in there. The height doesn't really matter, but um, maybe we'll make it that high or something. I'll add some kind of feature things just to make it a little bit interesting to make it look more like a uh, some sort of enclosure thing. Maybe even shell it out. Probably a good idea to do that. All right, so I got my little enclosure thing. And now I'm ready to kind of add tabs. Oh, let's do some... Uh, one more fill it before the shell do one here at the bottom make it like 1.5 There we go. This is all just aesthetic stuff But it, it kind of helps because you, it's not so sharp on your hands if you're hand holding it Anyway, we got our little box here now. It's time to make the tabs uh, You need to decide where your tabs need to be Do you want them to be on this side or on this side? Do you want to make four of them? Do you want to make two of them? I'm just making two of them. It's such a small display So I think two of them would fine, but you could kind of add an extra step at the end uh, to simply add a fourth, a second set of tabs. All right, so now that I got that, uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out what, um, I'm gonna use a sort of a mid plane to figure out the uh, the distance, not the distance, but to figure out the, the plane. Uh, I just need to make a plane that is in between this face and this face, right? And that'll give me a way, a construction plane to be able to mirror later when I make one tab. Because I, I just plan to make one tab and then duplicate that tab but I need a, a sort of a mirroring plane to do that. So there's this thing called construction. Under the constructions window, it's called a mid plane. So I'm gonna click on that. Actually, let's read that. That's actually a little bit better. Creates a construction plane at the midpoint between two faces or work planes. That's what I want. Let's click on that. Click on this one and then this one and then I get my mid plane. Mid plane is, is under the construction window that just folder that just kind of got created so we can turn this off and on whenever we need to. It's just kind of setting this up. Next thing I'll do is I'll make my sketch where I'm going to start drawing out that mounting tab. So I'm going to I'm going to click on the bottom of this enclosure because I do want it to be kind of attached to the bottom. And I'm going to hit P on my keyboard for project. That'll kind of just make a sketch automatically and project that bottom surface onto the sketch. So if I hide the body, you can see that the sketch is kind of here. Let me turn let's hit OK with the projection. I'm just going to accept that, whatever. So now that I have this plane, I can start working on my thing. 
the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make some construction lines uh, so that everything is centered. I want the the tab to be in a very specific spot of the enclosure in the exact center. So to do that, uh, I'll use the line tool and then I will kind of make a mid plane thing. So I'll make a line and as I kind of drag on this, you get this blue dotted line that just lets you know that you are in fact on that edge of an actual profile. It kind of locks into place too, it gives you a little bit of playroom. Once you see the mid, the triangle, that lets me know that's a midpoint. So I'm gonna click on that point and then kind of move my cursor over until where I think is the next midpoint. This is the next midpoint, I hit okay. And now I have these two triangles. These little icons let me know that I am indeed in the middle here. So no matter how I try to move this, it is now locked into the center of this. If I ever update the enclosure, these lines will adapt with it. So if everything's driven and constrained with this construction line, that's some good stuff. So I'm gonna hit X on my keyboard to make it a construction line so it's not intersecting this thing. And I'm gonna do the same thing, but for horizontal. No, vertically. So over here and over here, we just did horizontal. So now I'll grab it again, select it again, and then hit X. So now I have my kind of setup here. This reminds me a lot of my UX design stuff days where I would use Photoshop and make graphics and stuff. I would always do something similar to this where I'm always making guidelines so that I know I'm in the center of stuff, okay? The next thing I do is I'm gonna make my mounting hole, right? So I'm gonna use the circle tool and what I'll do is I will kind of, I want it to come out this way. So by dragging my, my cursor over the, uh, the construction line, Fusion kind of gives me a guideline, a, a smart guide to let me know I am in the center here. So I'm gonna click on that and then make it, uh, what was it, M5 or M4? Doesn't matter, we can change it later. So I'm gonna use M5 for this one. There's nothing kind of constrained yet, so I can move this around and it doesn't care because there's no rules set to it. So what I'll do is I'm going to say, I want the distance from this center of the circle to be a certain distance from this edge here, this center mid plane, mid, mid point thing. So as I click on that using the sketch dimension tool, I can now specify an exact dimension. So I'm gonna say 75 divided by two. That's gonna be 37.5. And that is basically we're dividing it in half because we're gonna duplicate it on the other side. So that's why in, when you put them together, it's gonna make 75. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to kind of sketch out a tab thing, right? So I'm gonna use the line tool to do this. And what I wanna do is just make a general shape of what I want. Not It doesn't have to be precise yet because we can apply our sketch dimensions later. So I'm gonna kind of draw over here. I want this to kind of be at an angle, so I'm gonna click on that to make it like that, and then maybe finish this up by doing that. So that's basically the kind of shape I want. It's not fixed yet, It's not. there's no dimensions really set to it, so I can kind of come in here and then kind of move these around. You can see how it works here. This is, uh, you can move this around too, but it does have this constraint here where it's saying um, it's basically a coincidence, yeah, a coincident so that this is always kind of locked to that edge and so is this one here. Uh, what's another thing we have? We have a uh, another constraint here that was applied automatically for us. It is the equal. So this is always equal to this guy in terms of kind of, um, if it, is it horizontally equal? They're kind of always horizontally equal with each other. Um, or maybe it's parallel. Maybe they're parallel with each other. Maybe that's what it is. I'm not sure if it's the equal one or, yeah, it's the parallel. So these two are always parallel with each other. Um, so that's great. So I have some constraints set. Let's let's make some more constraints, right? Next thing I'm gonna do is I want to have a very specific kind of uh, angle from this thing to this thing, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the sketch dimension. I'm gonna click on this edge and then this edge here that was projected that goes along with the bottom of the, the case. So I'm gonna click on that. And instead of uh, a dimension, it's more of, well, it is a dimension, but it's it's an angled dimension. So you see how that says 76.6. If I click that, I can change this now. I'm actually round this out to just 70. And now I get this kind of line that is always gonna be at a specific angle from the edge over here. So I could still move this, okay, that's still there, but I have it locked to where it won't kind of, uh, the, the angle will always be the same, so that's cool. So let's do the same thing for the bottom. I'll say this guy, and this guy need to have an angle of 70, like that. Okay, cool. So how are we doing? Are we able to kind of move this? Yes, we can still move this around. There's nothing locked to it yet. So let's keep working on it more. So let's do, next one I wanna do, I want a specific distance from this edge 
to the center of this circle, right? I have them selected because I held down shift, so now I'm just gonna click, uh, type D on my keyboard, that's the hotkey, and I can move my cursor, and now I can give a specific dimension to set the distance between these two guys. So I'm gonna say it's 5.9, so let's go ahead and round it off to like six, or actually let's give it some more, let's give it eight, right? I want a lot of material to be on that outer edge here. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I need to now get this guy in the center. So if I move this around, you can see um, there's, oh, I can, so you can see that there's a, a constraint here, but I can still move this around. So I want to set a dimension for this guy to be a certain length. I'm going to go with 10. Now if I move it around, you can see that it's almost fully kind of uh, fully constrained, right? So that means I can move this as a group. Now I just need to figure out a way how to keep it centered all the time. So what I can do is I'm actually going to add another construction line to the center of this end of the tab and then bring it into here like that. So now it's in the center. I will make it a construction line with the key X and now I can move this around. So now what I can do is I can say I want to do a collinear. So I want this construction line to be lined up with that construction line and now it is locked in place. So if I try to move this around now, I am now locked in place. I can do a little bit of things if I ever need to update this. Instead of a missed amount, maybe I need more. So what was it, uh, 37 maybe? What If I put 45, watch it happens. It kind of updates and carries the features over, which is pretty cool. So I can make this smaller if I wanted to, maybe 30. And things aren't breaking. It's really nice. The angles are all kind of constrained. Um, the distances are constrained, which is awesome. So I'm going to go back and put 75 point or 75 divided by two, which was 37.5. That's cool. I think this is maybe a little bit too big, so I'll set this to to six. You can see how it all automatically updates, which is awesome. One thing I want to note is that we don't know what the dis what the kind of length is for these kind of angled edges, and it kind of doesn't really matter, right? Maybe it matters, but this one doesn't matter. Um, if instead you wanted to say I would need this to be a certain length away from that. Then instead of using, uh, instead of saying I want this to be here, I can delete this and then say I want a distance from this edge to that edge instead, and then you know that it's 20. I'm going to undo that because I kind of like to be able to to change just the distance from here to here, which I think works out well. So I'm going to hit stop sketch at this point, and now I can actually start extruding this out. And what I'll do is I'll extrude this out um, depending on how thick you want it to be. I found two millimeters to be pretty plenty of thickness. Um, that gives it strength and stuff, so I'll hit OK. And you want to make sure, sorry, I kind of did that too fast. You want to make sure that the operation is set to new body. Um, if you have the body open, it might want to join to it. Joining it, we don't want to join it yet. We will join it later, so that's why I'm saying new body. The next thing I'll do is I'll just kind of preview this up a little bit. So I'll do a little fillet here until it's fully rounded off. So what is it, 7.5? And then I'll even add a chamfer here for if our screw uh, is kind of a, a, has a chamfer on it. I'll put one millimeters, and that looks pretty good. That looks nice. At this point, I can now actually mirror this out if I wanted to. So uh, what I'll do is I'll hit uh, the model sketch toolbox, or the model toolbox, and then type in mirror. Click on that, and I'll select my object. Make sure the pattern type is at the bodies, because we're selecting bodies. And then I'll change this selection to mirror plane. I'll bring back that mid plane that we did in the beginning. Click on that. You get a little preview of where it's going to go. That's exactly where we want to go, so I'll hit OK. And now I have our two tabs. The last thing I'll do is I'll combine all these things together. So I'll, I'll type in combine and then select these three here like that. And the operation set to join, which is good. Hit OK. And that's kind of it, guys. So one of the cool things is that because this is driven with uh, the center based kind of uh, sketches, I can come in here and update the length here of our box. Hit OK. And it broke. That's very, very odd. It shouldn't have broke. Let's go back in there and see what happened. I don't think, oh, there isn't a, a constraint set to it yet. That's so funny. Good thing we broke it, so let's undo it. This is exactly what happens when you try to uh, make something parametric and you update it and things break. You expect it to kind of adapt to it. So one thing we forgot to do was to tell with the circle to, to kind of go with this thing here. So to do that, all I did was I clicked and dragged, and then this X popped up. That's not what we want. That's weird. But you can see it's not constrained. So to constrain it, I need to do, I think I can do a collinear. So I can say, 
Uh, actually, no, there is no collinear. There we go. We did a coincidence. So we said that this should always be kind of in the center. So I just clicked on that center, clicked on coincidence, and then clicked on this uh, center line here. So now it'll always update. So let's try doing that update again. I'm kind of happy that that mistake happened because that's kind of what would happen if you didn't apply that constraint. So I'm going to go ahead and go back into this guy here where I'm kind of modifying it and I'll stretch that out and stretch this out just to kind of show you that because everything's driven with uh, kind of parametric stuff, it kind of updates. So everything updated. That's, that's, that's awesome. That worked out really well. And if you bring it in shorter, you'll notice that the tabs, the length of them kind of update too. So I'm going to update this one guy, bring this in so it's more narrow, and you'll see that the tabs are longer and winged out more. And that's because there's, there really isn't a constraint to say that there should always be distance from here to here. We could add that if we wanted to, but the, the main thing is that it's the, the distance between these two holes are always going to be 75, which is the goal here to make a this amount. So I got these two here. I'll hit I on my, my keyboard to find out the measurement of them. Uh, let me click on this one. And now you can see that the, that ah, didn't work. Let me do that again. I for measure, and I want to measure that line and then this line, and it'll tell me it's 75. That's the distance. Then the minimum distance is kind of the minimum distance between the two circles. So there you go. Um, so this was really kind of um, important way for me to create a dynamic tab that kind of grew with the design. So um, having this set up in this way really helps out. Uh, you saw when I updated the length and it broke, it was because it was just missing that one coincident the <laughs> constraint. So with that applied now, um, everything kind of makes sense. So you can really dissect uh, all these individual little things here, all these little constraints and understand why they're there. So hopefully that was useful to you. If you were making a project, a display, uh, maybe you want to make a mounting plate for your display or something, you can totally use these, uh, these kind of steps uh, to make something that uh, can kind of grow if you ever want to change the design. But Overall, I think this, this is a good way to make this kind of shape. So let me know what you guys think. I hope you thought it was useful. Leave this, if you did like this, go ahead and leave, that, uh, leave the, a comment and a like. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you guys for watching.